Hey friends, welcome back to the Destination Baby and Kids YouTube channel. This is Gina. I am here with you right now um, to more thoroughly explain and get excited over the Evenflow Revolve 360 Extend car seat. So, um, what is the big deal with this guy? There was a previous version of this that I covered in my last rotational video called the Evenflow Revolve. That was a really good car seat. This Evenflow Revolve 360 Extend is a much better car seat. So um, if I were going to buy one of the two, I would opt for the newer, newest model because it has some features that are excellent for the price and for how it's supposed to behave. So let's talk about it. This is going to be what is referred to as an all-in-one seat. So it will face rear facing, forward facing, and also be a booster seat. So your rear facing compatibility, I just wanna make sure that I don't get this wrong, is gonna be four to 50 pounds, and it will go up to 48 standing inches for the rear facing mode. Forward facing mode, <laughs> different everywhere but they would need to be at least 22 pounds and 28 inches and two years of age before they would sit in the seat forward facing. Now um, in California it's the law that kids have to sit rear facing until age two so we're just going to assume that you are also following best practice which is keeping them rear facing for as long as humanly possible in their car seat uh, as long as the weight and the height is allowed. So um, that being said special things to note about this particular seat and installation or special things to be aware of. The body pad and the head pad are only able to be used in a rear facing mode. And then something else that's kind of special and exciting is that um, this particular car seat allows for atypical latch placement in the center in the back seat of a car if a vehicle allows it and it meets the criteria of the vehicle. If that doesn't get you excited don't worry about it there's a small subset of people that would be excited about that feature it's a pretty small feature that almost nobody would ever use but if you wanted to theoretically the seat can do it so that's nice that being said let's get into what makes it special so again rear facing we can start with a child as little as five pounds most people don't start with these as an infant seat and they want you to tuck the back piece behind. Additionally, in the book, it indicates that you can fold these side pieces under and the back bit underneath the seat pad for a really small child, uh, just to help the placement of the harness to be correct on their body. So that's exciting. Um, I'm just gonna remove it only because this is kind of what I'd like to show off. Sorry, recall card. But what's really exciting about this is that if you look at this seat, it has an incredibly long seated torso height. So this is something I harp on all the time. Other technicians and other car seat reviewers probably don't get into it, but I'm gonna get into it. This distance here from butt to the top of shoulder is a really important distance to be aware of when you're buying a car seat. There are other car seats on the market that will do 360 degree rotation. My gripe with those seats is generally speaking, they have a very short harness height or they cut off the child sitting rear facing at 50 pounds and 40 inches, or excuse me, 40 pounds and 40 inches. So this seat enables us to do what's called extended rear facing, where we get 10 additional pounds moving from 40 to 50 pounds in rear facing mode. And then you would also get a longer seated torso height. So if we take a really popular car seat, um, I'm not gonna name a name, but let's just say a typical car seat that's in a high price point. So a premier car seat will generally have 17 inches of seated torso height, meaning the height from the butt to the top of the shoulder is gonna be about 17 inches. This guy, when I measured it, my measuring tape is over there, but when I measured this distance, I got 20 inches. So three more inches of seated torso height is a lot. If you have a child that hits a growth spurt or your kid isn't in the 25th percentile for height and weight, this is an excellent seat. It's got 
um, 12 inches side to side, and like I said, 20 inches here, 50 pounds rear facing, 65 forward facing, and then it boosters, I mean, to like, gosh, I think 110. I'm gonna double check that. Boosters to 120 and 57 standing inches, so that's huge. Um, I'm not gonna worry about the booster stuff right this instant. What I wanna show is the rotation. So, why are rotating seats awesome? Move that. The seat is now backward. Let's see if I can turn it to show. So now, if we wanted to get our baby in or out, we're able to spin the seat toward the vehicle door. We're able to put in a heavy two or three year old, maybe even a normal sized four year old. And then we can spin the seat back to rear facing. The other thing that's cool about it, it has this little pad extension. This zippers both ways. So I'll unzip it and you can zip it on the other way. It's a pretty cool feature for forward facing because it's a, like a leg rest. So that's kind of nice. Uh, rear facing is just like a nice soft protection, but we could zip it on either direction. Um, that being said, Speaking of zippers, the seat, there's two versions of the seat. This one is $399. So they do a version with sensor safe. That's gonna be $429. Sensor safe is an additional chest clip piece that will communicate with your phone different information like temperature, if you've left your baby in the car, that type of thing. Otherwise, the seats are going to be identical. So I didn't feel a need to cover both. If you want, this, but the version of sensor safe. You can have a look at that on my video comparing all of the three new Evenflow seats. And the nice thing about that one is that it does come, in my opinion, better color choices. Now, if you go with the 399 version, what you get in lieu of sensor safe is going to be this easy clean fabric, which unzips, separates, and will go in for washing very easily. So we're not having to like struggle to get that off. Um, my sister's kids were huge. So the thought of lifting a 30 pound child over a sidewall and then attempting to buckle them in was pretty frustrating, especially toward the heavy end when they were older, like two and three. So a seat that can turn to the door, you can put them in, you can get them tightened up, and then you've got the option to just spin it back is amazing. The other thing that's cool about this guy is that it's one of the few options that lets you play with the recline while it's installed. So if I pinch there, I'm able to sit the seat more upright. Now, the thing about this seat is that if it's in its most upright, it'll still turn to the door for loading and unloading, but it won't spin all the way around in 360. So in order to hit that 360 swivel, we would need to recline it, and then it'll come back to being in a forward facing position. So why would this matter? Let's say you're a grandparent and you have uh, two different children and then they have kids and they're all different ages. And let's say you're picking up one after school that's like four years old. So you have it set in a forward facing mode, correctly adjusted for their body. You drop them off and now you're gonna go babysit for your other child. <laughs> you pick up the child to take to your home and let's say that baby is a year old, the same seat in grandma's car can now spin around for the one-year-old. And without having to really play with anything too much, we're able to adjust it down to the correct size. And she's still going to be able to load that baby in super easily. So um, the real benefit of this guy, as I said, is that compared to any other 360 seat on the market, it will have the least interference with the turning mechanism. It has one of the easiest turns and it holds the tallest child. The only exception would be Cybex Serona 360, but that's a considerably more expensive car seat. That one also, you have to do the top tether. So for forward facing, when you spin it, it is going to be a little bit more work. Their argument, anyway, technically, anyway, point of the story being, 
That seat is more work to use. It is also more work to install. Has some similar features, but price point here really can't be beat. You're looking at a $399 price point for a seat that starts off with five pounds, goes up to 50 rear facing, turns around to be 65 for forward facing, and then can be a booster seat till 120 pounds. When you are ready for booster mode, what you do with this guy, I did a little research, I read the book, is going to be, this will come up, this will come apart. There's pieces in the side wings where this all goes. And then you're using the regular seatbelt with the seat, you could latch the base in at that point just to have the seat sort of have a placeholder and you could latch the top portion as well. Now, as I said, this is a removable piece. You can zip it on either way. So depending on however you would like to use it, as you can see here, now it's a little footrest for older kids, which is great. They can have their heels there, a little bit more foot support. Blood isn't pooling into their feet, not so horribly uncomfortable. So that's really awesome. And another thing I love about this is the installation is so easy. So just to show you, there's, um, I don't know if you can see, but I'll bring it up to show, there's arrows on the product. So if you notice right here, there's a little arrow. There's also an arrow on this portion, which is the base. And when I line those arrows up, this whole thing just drops into where it's supposed to go. Oh, close. More arrows over there. There. So there's two arrows. You can set it either way. Eventually it'll drop into where it's supposed to once it lines up and then you're good to go. Um, removal is sort of the same story. You will rotate it until you see the arrows line up like I do here. And then I just remove the seat. Now, the base is included with the seat. There are not additional bases to purchase. That's not the intention of this seat. They don't want that piece moving around. So when you buy the seat, it will come with its own base. I'm gonna unbuckle this guy just cause I had it set up so I could make sure no children fell out of it today. Actually, I already sold one of these today sitting out. So that's why I'm making the video. I'm a little concerned that they're gonna sell before I have them back in stock. Um, and as you can see, there is a top tether. You would start with that part where you would tether it to the back of your vehicle. There's always a spot to hook that up. In any car newer than 1999, mandated by law. So once you have that piece hooked up, tighten it up slightly. You don't have to go hog wild because you'll tighten it again at the end. And then here, there's a piece on the inside that you open. I did a video on the regular revolve of how to do this, but I'm happy to go over it again because it is so easy. This base can be placed wherever you want on the seat buck, which is awesome. You can really scoot it over a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right prior to installation to make it go where you want it to. And then you're just gonna take your belt and run it through where there's the blue belt path. Now you could of course use the latches that come with it, but that'll have a cutoff weight. I don't wanna reinstall this stuff. So I generally elect to use a seat belt almost every time with a convertible seat, just cause the kids are so heavy and the seat's heavy too. And that overwhelms the latch unit pretty rapidly. So you have to reinstall with belt anyway. So it's like, if I'm gonna do the work, I'm gonna do it one time at the beginning and that's it. So now that this is in, I'm gonna tighten the shoulder belt component, making sure that the belt kind of stays within the teeth. There's little teeth there just as a guideline. Now I'm not going crazy, but yeah, I mean, I'm making sure that the slack is out and then I'm gonna close up this part until I hear a click. So that made a definitive click noise. I don't know if you can see, but there is an indicator that went from red to green. So now it's green, so I know it's locked. But in the book, there's a fast installation, but if we want a truly perfectly correct installation, we do what the book says, and that's gonna tell us to lock our seatbelt off. So you're gonna take your belt, pull it all the way out till it can't go out any further. And when it retracts, it usually makes a noise. So we know that that's locked off. This is not moving an inch from its installation point. That was literally a two second install. I didn't get sweaty. I'm able to see what I'm doing. I have an open belt path. 
I could put it at any spot in my car, provided there isn't a frontal airbag. And then I can take the seat and just pop it on. So again, line up arrow to arrow. Again, little arrow. There's an arrow there. Just like that. And we're installed. So, um, this redesign couldn't have been better. I feel like they've made this angle with the knees also a little flatter, which was my annoyance on the regular Revolve, old school model. New school model holds bigger kids, way better price point, $399 or $429, depending on how many bells and whistles you want and what color you're interested in. But this to me is an incredibly functional car seat, has a million applications that'll be really useful and I'm excited to see what else they're going to do. And I think that this is really kind of like a game changing car seat, sold car seats for 20 years. I'm incredibly impressed with this. Um, yeah, there's things like I wish it was, you know, maybe more attractive, more premium fabric, but functionally and the cost, kind of blown away. I have one more to review as well. So if you liked this guy, but you're thinking, hey, that looks a little big, I'd prefer something less wide, they make a slim. So that's gonna be my next one. Feel free to watch that video. If you have any questions or follow-ups, feel free to leave them in the comments. Please feel free to hit like and subscribe. And if you have any friends that it may make sense to check this out, feel free to share the video with them. Knowledge is power. Thank you so much for watching. And like I said, um, feel free to check out our next video or any of the other videos that we've put up. Or if you have other questions about other things, like I said, leave them in the comments. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next video.